dynamic instabilities are developed in structures when there's a continuous input of kinetic energy to the system from the external loads and as a result it continues to move with increasing amplitude and potentially get out of control. Such incidents can happen due to several reasons such as when an undamped system is excited at a resonant frequency, in misaligned rotating equipment and several general cases where there is an improper distribution of mass and stiffness. In all these cases, there is a continuous change in kinetic energy of the system that sets it into a state of instability. So this kind of instability involves the inertial terms in the governing equation. A good designer must anticipate this change and either dissipate the excess energy or direct it to a specific part of a system. Going back to the governing equations, we can see how the energy is changing forms in a system. The external loads do work on the system and act as a source of energy. Depending on the dynamic properties of the system, this energy may be stored as its kinetic energy or as potential energy. The key for studying instabilities is to see how much of the energy is converted to kinetic energy and then plan to dissipate this energy in a controlled fashion to ensure its stability. There are many forms of dynamic instabilities and it's hard to list all of them. But let's look at some of them and see how are they solved. Let's start with flutter. It's a form of dynamic instability that's caused due to the flow of fluid around the structure. Most common cases are interactions with airflow. Usually when this happens, the structure is excited at one or more natural frequencies by the wind loads and sets the structure into a dangerous vibrating mode. At the flutter point, usually the structure undergoes a harmonic motion with zero damping. Any further reduction in damping will set the system into self-oscillating mode and at this stage, the structure derives energy continuously from the loads even when they don't have any periodicity. This is the kind of instability that the Tacoma Narrows Bridge experienced before it collapsed. Another common example that can potentially experience flutter is the airplane wings. In case of airplane wings, the air creates lift and drag forces that act periodically on it. The wings are generally flexible and have both bending and torsional vibration modes. For a wing design, if both these vibration modes are close by, and when they get excited by the wind forces, the wing starts vibrating violently before failing. In fact, this has been a bottleneck for the engineers in achieving supersonic flight speeds where the wings are easily excited at very high speeds. This issue was fixed by strategically introducing structural reinforcements in the wing to distribute and increase the difference between the prominent modes of the wing. Another example of flutter is seen in galloping transmission lines. This phenomenon is not that common in equatorial regions, but in the northern hemisphere, where the cold weather can lead to formation of ice sleets on the transmission cables. These ice depositions can take the shape of an air airfoil as the water drips and falls due to gravity. When this happens, the cold winds can start applying the lift and drag forces on the ice which can set the transmission lines into periodic motion. As a result, when the loads match the natural frequency of the transmission lines, the wire may be set into vibrations with increasing amplitudes. This is a very dangerous situation and the maintenance personnel 
can do very little at this point and they generally recommend staying away from the lines. So before installing, the engineers must make design features to either avoid such vibrations or at least provide a mechanism for dissipating this excess energy. In these three examples, we can see how the airflow and wind loads can set a structure into a dynamically unstable state. Another form of instabilities is the friction-induced instabilities. Friction is a dissipating process, so one would expect it to dissipate the excess energy and stabilize the system. But it is also known to introduce dynamic instabilities in a system. Earthquakes are a classic example. When tectonic plates move over each other, the friction between them when they move can send out vibrations. And when the variable friction results in stick-slip phenomena, the sudden slip can result in more aggressive tremors. This is what we mean by saying that the pressure is developed in the fault lines. Another example, which is a rather pleasant one, unlike an earthquake, is the string instrument violin. The friction between the violin bow and the violin strings results in the vibrations in the string, which in turn generates the music. An engineering example for friction-induced instabilities is brake squeal. This is one of the major warranty issues faced by the original equipment manufacturers in the automotive industry. The squeaking sound that we hear when a brake is applied is due to the brake squeal. It's a form of dynamic instability induced due to variational frictional force between the brake pads and the rotor. Such variational friction can be introduced due to loosely connected components or due to wrongly chosen geometric and material properties. The brake squeal analysis of a system is usually performed in the form of a nonlinear pre-stress model analysis. This study determines the vibrational properties of the brake pad rotor system. Due to large friction, a special form of analysis called as a complex eigenvalue analysis is performed, which outputs mode frequencies as complex numbers. The real part of these frequencies represents the stability and a positive value is considered as an unstable mode. So in general, a parametric simulation with the coefficient of friction identified as a parameter can show us what are the acceptable values for a given design so the unstable modes are avoided. Now let's shift our focus to the dynamic instabilities that are seen in rotating equipment. Usually rotating structures are mounted on a stator using bearings. When the center of mass of the assembly does not align perfectly with the axis of rotation, it results in a mass misalignment that leads to centrifugal forces that are imbalanced. Due to the rotation, this unbalanced force acts in a harmonic fashion. When the speed of rotation matches the natural frequency of such system, it starts vibrating with increasing amplitude, which is its state of instability. This speed of rotation is called as critical speed. You may have experienced them while driving a car. Sometimes when you're driving past a speed, the vehicle may start shaking, at which point you lower the speed to reduce the vibration. This indicates that the vehicle is approaching its critical speed. Several complex structures such as steam turbines, air compressors and turbochargers that operate at very high RPM can experience more complicated vibrations of this type. In fact, there's a dedicated branch of study called as rotor dynamics 
that involves studying the dynamics of such systems to avoid serious damages from instabilities. But such instabilities occur in daily life too, especially in automobiles. The tires are made of rubber and can experience wear and tear, which results in loss of material. Due to this, the weight distribution of the wheel may change and result in imbalance. This can result in rotational instabilities in the car at higher speeds. One way of fixing this is to assess the misalignment in the tire and then reduce it by adding small calibrated weights to the rim and make the vehicle stable again. These are some of the examples for dynamic instabilities that can occur in structures. And you can see that in these cases, the excess kinetic energy in the system is the reason behind the unstable behavior. Due to the seriousness of damages, it's important to identify and rectify them at the design stages. There are three possible ways for resolving such issues. By modifying the design so the natural frequencies of the system do not fall within the operational loads. By adding structural reinforcements at strategic places so the kinetic energy is converted into potential energy of the system. And a third and popular solution is to dissipate the excess kinetic energy from the system in a timely and controlled manner. Usually, the modal and harmonic analysis can be conducted on the system to identify which of these solutions is appropriate for an application. We'll discuss one such examples in this section and compare different ways of resolving the dynamic instabilities.